Well, it's Friday, June 8, 2018. We're headed north on Missouri Highway 67, headed to the 21st annual Missouri Mines Rock Swap. We're excited to see vendors with rocks and minerals and fossils from all over the region and hoping to meet Art Hebrink, who is a geological expert second to none in the region. It's rocks, it's minerals, it's fossils, it's a museum tour, it's experts on this episode of Rock Counting USA. And we're here with Aaron from Red Dirt Rock Hounds out of Oklahoma. Aaron, are you excited to be out here at the 21st annual Rock Swap? Absolutely. This is my, I call it my home show, even though I'm 700 miles from home, but we've been here for seven years. And so this is where all our people are at. We love to be here. So, so what have you got today? What are you proud of? What are you showing off? What's um, moving? We kind of kept it. I don't know what's moving. You tell me, but right now what we did is we kept it homey. So we brought in our state mineral the barite rose rock agglomeration and we also have a bunch of selenite crystals and plates that we mine in freedom oklahoma so if you'd like to see some of this i've also got halite so here's a really nice rose rock which is a barite crystal in sandstone i mean dozens of barite crystals nested in sandstone it grows in c2 and then you got to pressure wash them free Fantastic. so this is a real nice one out of the norman area and then this is the mineral selenite nice and clear you can see all the way into it see the surface features where are these found at Aaron um we have a lot of gypsum over on our end of the state the west end we're from Woodward Oklahoma so these are specifically from freedom but there's gyp knobs all over so you can find selenite if you're lucky and you look hard enough or you're digging in the right places or you have access to the mine so Fantastic. these were these were they were scraping a road making a road bigger and so they started turning these over and we just started grabbing them right up so fabulous um, fabulous are, this is halite natural crystal salt which grows in a saline creek north of woodward our town um, if you look at a satellite map you can see cargill has a salt factory there too where they're um, making their own salt so that's a lot of fun because this, the water is so salty that the crystals grow and they they replenish really quickly and every time you go back every week or two it's totally different from itself before so. folks we caught up with tony <laughs> right here with old dirt road rocks and minerals the oh, man yeah. in the brown hat <laughs> tony what is going on here today oh not much just loving the show out here a lot of great people uh, i encourage everybody if they can to stop by the missouri mines uh, rock swap out here in missouri it's great we have our indoor booth here, which is our nice trailer, 20-foot trailer, where we have a lot of specimens, hand-cut cabochons for myself, a lot of great rough. We have a little bit of everything in here. Um, so we appreciate if you guys come down, support everybody here. We're all having a blast and would love you to join us. If people want to find you online or in the real world, how do they find you? Uh, they can find us on Facebook. You can look up Old Dirt Road rocks and minerals fabulous what's your favorite piece you've got at the show today favorite piece that i have would have to be my outback rough which is in a pallet outside here um, i've got that and it's about a second year that it's been out and mined so it's wonderful stuff cuts beautiful cabochons fabulous nice to meet you tony thank you and we've caught up with Lisa from hager's fossils and minerals out of st yes. louis Hi. lisa what is going on at the show today well, uh, we sit up here every year, and it's a great outdoor show out, on, out at the Missouri Mines here. Um, and we, we bring all kinds of stuff, uh, such as we have, like today we have our, our fossil coral. We bring our, our we, we like mammoth stuff, so we have a lot of uh, You have Alaska a mammoth, mammoth collection. Yes, we have a lot of mammoth things here. We also have custom-made knives uh, that we have, some megalodon teeth, minerals, fossils. Uh, we have these other... Mammoth teeth are cut and polished. They're and, beautiful. And they, they look jummy, and yet they represent 
you know, they represent the mammoth. Well. So if people are looking for you, how can they find you online and how can they find you in the real world? Hager's Fossils and Minerals is on Facebook. So you can come and like our page and we also have a website, Hager's Fossils and Minerals. Awesome. And then the next shows, we'll be out we'll all over the place, but we'll be in Denver and we also do Tucson. Oh, you do Tucson. Yeah. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Thank you. That's right, folks. We have caught up with the living legend, Art Hebrank, 21 years ago. What was the impetus? What was the reason that, that led this event to be created? What what started all this? Actually, it was before that. I mean, I've been I've been interested in rocks and minerals since I was about six, seven years old in St. Louis, and I went to a lot of uh, rock swaps through the years. And my friends and I would talk about what is the perfect kind of place for a rock swap. And we thought, the more I thought about it, this is like it: a mine actual mine complex that produced rocks with a museum of minerals and fossils in it that people can look at to help draw in a nice historic parking lot to set up in. Where do the vendors typically come from? What's the furthest away that you know of anyone here? New Mexico. We have two from New Mexico. Uh, Pennsylvania. Um, that's, that's the farthest. Mostly Missouri, Illinois, all the surrounding states. Um, and north wisconsin minnesota but then like i say pennsylvania uh, new mexico so uh, what would you say is the mission statement for an event like this what is your real goal what are you hoping to achieve yeah the mission statement for us in the in the historic site our mission has to do with with um, interpreting the mining history and the mining well, anything to do with mining in the state of missouri and the mineral resources that are responsible for that mining so what this event does is it, it supports that second part of the of the of the site mission to uh, promote and tell people, teach people about the mineral resources of the state. And here we are catching up with Wayne. Wayne, it's a great day here at the 21st annual Rock Swap. What have you got to show today? I got a little bit of everything from all over the world because you know I hang out in Tucson and Quartzsite most of the year, and I travel everywhere all over the United States. I have a nice selection of everything. Gotcha. Now, what are you most proud of that you've got here at the show today? Today, I have some Crystal Cola I dug out of the Planet uh, Ranch in Arizona this year. and I also Fabulous have, blue. Fabulous blue. Also has some brilliant wood I got. Petrified wood I sliced up and polished here. And it's real nice and unique looking. It's a different look. Super nice. Super nice. Got some nice septarians. Yes, I have septarians from Utah that... Uh, one of the gentlemen in uh, Desert Gardens, he makes these lists from Utah. And we kind of swap out stuff. We swap things out. So I pick up a lot of stuff while I'm in Desert Gardens. Great. How many years have you been associated with this show? Uh, this is my third year. And uh, how many shows do you typically do a year around the country? About 12 to 15. When do you have time to dig? Well, when I'm in Quartzsite, I don't do Tucson anymore. I take two days off every week. For like two to three months, I go digging every week. I love it. I love it. Wayne, uh, we have a great show. Okay, thanks. All right, Steve, today we're seeing collections that are lifetime in the making, and then you just told me something that is earth-shattering. What did you just say? All these were collected this week and opened this week. All of this in the last seven days in Hamilton, Illinois. What kind of uh, mineral anomalies are you guys finding in these geodes? Uh, I think the most favorite is Millerite. My favorite is the pyrite cubes with the hair off of the cube and a ball on into the end of the hair. That's phenomenal. Uh, some of the calcites, you know, we'll get brown, pink, and white all in one geode. Or we'll get the rutilated pyrite on the pink calcite, like this one here on the smoky. You were saying earlier even gertide and aragonite? Yeah. And different colors. What kind of colors are we seeing in the calcite? In the calcite, on a regular basis, uh, we see, of course, a lot of clear in the white. Um, we get pinks, we get browns, um, and then in the quartz, we get sea mist green, occasionally a dark green. Of course, we get some smoky, it's so dark, it almost looks black. And it's not been heat treated? No. Uh, we get, of course, diamond dewdrop geodes, and we get... Uh, Combinations, you know, as, as, as deep as these two on the, on the calcites. <laughs> and if people are looking for you, how can they find you? We're our stores in Hamilton, Illinois. And uh, just call us, 309-313-2077. You have a website presence? 
we've got a Facebook page. It's KilcookGeo.com on Facebook, and we've got a we've got a website. Great, great. All right, man. And so here we are with Marv Damon. Now, Marv, you said that you go way back with this event. Tell us about that. Well, I'm a retired school teacher, and I retired 18 years ago, and I started doing this Park Hill show before I retired, which means I've been here for more than 20 years. Uh, it draws many, many vendors from all over the United States, and uh, if this, this particular venue uh, showcases the one of the... One of the Missouri mines that's still somewhat intact. The head frame is here. The buildings and the crushing plants and the separating plants are still here. Uh, Art Hebrink runs the museum, and he's provided uh, people in this area with a great mineral museum, a chance to look at not only local material, but a, worldwide collections as well. Now, I do a number of gem and mineral shows, some indoor shows at expo centers and nice air-conditioned buildings with many many vendors oftentimes when you attend some of those bigger fancier shows you're inundated with with table after table of beads and products that were made in foreign countries and there aren't very many rocks to look at when you attend a gem and mineral show open air in Park Hill Missouri you will have 60 vendors bringing pick up truck loads of rocks and things that they have sometimes collected or, or gathered from older collections. It's one of the last actual rock shows. You can walk around the grounds and you can actually look at minerals, rocks, gemstone materials in their raw states which are attractive to me because I'm a cutter. I don't want to buy finished jewelry, I make jewelry. I don't want to buy beads. I make jewelry, so I'm very interested in looking at the raw materials, and that's one of the big draws for shows like this. And we've caught up with John Doldy with the Burroughs Pack. John, what is going on out here at the Missouri Rock Swap? Oh, lots of folks coming out to look at rocks, minerals, crystals, some jewelry makers, uh, lapidarists, a little bit of everything going on. How many years have you been associated with this event? Um, I... This is either my 17th or 18th year doing this. And you look 21, so you started very young. I'm very young, yes. Um, I actually started right out of, well, I was still in college getting a, ba a bachelor's degree in geology and started with one table of stuff, self-collected minerals, Missouri minerals, Jersey quartz, barite, and some oh. fossils. Washington County stuff there, baby. Yep. And now I've got stuff from all over the world, all over the United States, and a little bit of everything to try and appease all the folks with their different tastes. Um, I, I try and pride myself on providing Missouri minerals from the Viburnum Trend of Missouri, which yes. is the premier lead district in yes. the United States, if not the world. That's right. So, and I've got, you know, material from a lot of the different mines, the Sweetwater Mine, the Fletcher Mine, uh, some older specimens from the Buick Mine, which is now closed, and that, and also some minerals from the old Lead Belt, yeah, as well go. as the Tri-State District uh, in southwestern Missouri, northeastern Oklahoma, and southeastern Kansas. If you're looking for me online, I do have a web page. It's not been updated in quite some time, theburrowspack.com, but I can be found under my name, John L. Doldy on Facebook very easily and pictures of rocks I understand all the time I saw a huge piece of metamorphic rock back there and I told the guy that it was nice yes very nice Art what is this monstrosity before us today well this monstrosity is a fantastic Washington County specimen uh, it has barite the white material is barite bladed barite Snow white, and that's a natural color. I, I know this, I'm familiar with this material, and nothing's been done to this except wash it. And then these the little rosettes are sphalerite, and they're on a coating of marcasite. Beautiful thing. And, and things like this didn't exist until a few years ago. Nobody had ever, you know, seen one of these. This is, you know, fairly new material, which is pretty shocking for, for you know, state of Missouri, some totally new material that nobody's seen uh, before. And this comes out of which county? Washington. This is Washington County. And we've caught up with Jesse, Mineshaft Minerals, out here at the 21st Annual Missouri Mines Rock Swap. 
Jesse, what are you proud of that you've got on display today? So really happy with the fluorite uh, that we have from an old Illinois collection. Um, we just purchased a new Linwood collection of calcites and barites. We have lots of thumbnails. We spent a lot of time making perky boxes. Uh, so we're really excited just to be out here and be able to feature all of our stuff. And we also have a lot of crystal artwork that is done by my girlfriend. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So uh, how many shows do you do a year? So this is the third show this year. We got a couple other ones lined up in the St. Louis area. The Machinist Hall show in August. Uh, Crystal Fest in two weeks. Um, and currently that's it. Usually we do about 10 shows a year though. Great. What's your favorite piece? Could you show us your favorite piece that you have on display today? Absolutely. Oh, is it that fluorite? Yeah, so these fluorites were mined back in the 60s, and they were never clean until the fall of 2016. And I was the third person to see them clean without mine dust on them. And they're just absolutely spectacular. The blues and the green, uh, the yellows and the calcopyrite. It's almost like phantoms. Yeah, they are. The zoning in these is just absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite things about fluorite, especially from Illinois. Rosa Claire area. Beautiful stuff. That's definitely one to be proud of. Yeah, thank you. Jess, you got something real special in your hands there. Tell us about this. Yeah, so we picked up a parcel of these calcite crystals from Mexico that have a scalenohedral gro twin growth with a secondary twin growth of calcite on top of them. Uh, it's from a fairly small pocket of these clear ones. A lot of the new ones are a, a milky brown color. And so we we're really excited to be able to offer these. And uh, first time I've actually offered them for sale. I've had them for a couple years now. Yeah.